Hey everybody, Donnie Gupton here, and I help staffing agencies and recruitment companies put together a winning digital game plan in order to grow their business. And today I wanted to talk about, you know, to niche or not to niche, or niche or not to niche. And I'm going to also talk about five ways to carve out a target market um, for your recruitment business. So last night I was watching uh, American Sniper, and this is one of my favorite movies about war hero. Uh, Chris Kyle and Chris was an incredible incredible sniper and had a ton of uh, confirmed kills and uh, so he's really good at what his job was but as I was watching the movie you know one thing came up and that was aim small miss small it came up a couple of times in this movie now it wasn't something that they created or it wasn't something that's specific to Chris Kyle or anything like that but it's a common analogy used when teaching somebody how to shoot and aim and as I was watching this, I'm like, man, that really kind of resonates with marketing as well. And the approach you need to take when you, when you target market is to aim small and miss small. Create a small audience that you can go after and connect with. You know, Chris wouldn't have been nearly as successful doing what he was doing if he was just picking up a gun and spraying it all over the place and hoping that he connects with somebody. And that's what a lot of people do in marketing. They just throw out all these different messages and think that hope, hope and pray that this message works this day. And that's a big challenge. It's a really, really, really big challenge. Um, how to separate yourself. And one of the biggest ways you can separate yourself from the competition is by picking this market. And so, you know, one of the last scenes in the movie, Chris is actually able to take out one of the high profiled snipers from over a mile away. Well, the reason he's able to do this is because he's laser focused on what he's going after. So again, same concept, aim small, miss small. He would have not been as successful, probably not would have taken that guy out who killed tons of American soldiers. Uh, he wouldn't have been able to take that guy out if he would have just sprayed all over that building and just hoped that he, he connected. So, you know, being a generalist in the recruitment industry is challenging. And the biggest reason is, is because your message isn't resonating with anybody. You're taking the same approach of, of just, you know, aim, shoot, and fire at anything instead of really focusing in on a specific target market and really trying to carve out a path in that industry. So, you know, what happens is you end up burning a lot of money because your campaigns aren't focused and your campaigns aren't targeted. So, you know, if you're a huge recruitment company, this is irrelevant because you have the money to burn and you can go pick and, and choose where you want to spend your money. You can spend it in the staffing, uh, the nursing, you can spend it in, you know, uh, uh, mechanical, industrial, engineering. It doesn't really matter because you have enough money, but I venture to bet that most people watching this, this video have a budget. And so how they're going to get a return on investment in their marketing is extremely important. And it's just, you can't do that being a generalist recruiter. You cannot get a good return on investment uh, with your marketing efforts digitally. Uh, when you are a generalist. So the other thing is it becomes difficult to get a response. You know, people, again, going back to that messaging thing, because we're not crafting messaging specific to a market, we are just kind of saying, hey, well, you know, I'm another recruiter and I'm really good at bringing top talent to the table. Well, I can tell you, speaking with hundreds of recruiters, that almost everybody has the same unique selling proposition. So you really need to find out unique ways to carve out a place in a specific niche in a market. So you can clearly communicate to your marketplace. The next thing is, well, which talent community do you go after, right, as you're building your business? So if you're, you know, in a successful recruitment company or, or staffing agency, uh, your talent community should not be reactive, meaning you shouldn't get an open search and all of a sudden you start scrambling for talent. You should be building this ongoing. So again, if you're a generalist, how do you, which, which set of talent are you trying to go after? What community are you trying to build? Who are you trying to ultimately connect and engage with? It becomes very, very difficult to prioritize that. And again, do that on a, on a limited budget, very challenging. So when you pick a market and pick a niche, you know, watch your business grow. Okay. And one of the main reasons is because you can communicate to these people. Now you're targeted, you're aimed, you know, exactly who you're going after. You know what their challenges are. You know what their problems are. You can be the authority in the marketplace, really, because, hey, you know that what they're doing every day. You can bring insight to their business that they don't even know about, insight, insight about the, the industry as a whole or positions, you know, 
um, you could really become the authority. And it also helps you understand, it's easier for you to understand their business, right? So if you're gonna go after all these multiple verticals that you can recruit in, then that's fine. But to become the authority and to scale your business and grow your business, it's a lot easier when you're a true expert in one field. So, you know, you definitely want to keep that in mind. Authoritative marketing is a big thing to do, and it's very hard to do when you are just a generalist. But when you select that niche and pick a niche, you know, being an authority is a lot easier. So the next thing it allows you to do is it's easier to target talent, right? Now talent is going to want to come to you because first this talent is going to view you as an authority. They're going to view you as, oh, this guy has all the connections with all the hospitals. This guy has all the connections with all the manufacturers. This is the guy's that I need to get in, involved with and in touch with. They can get me the best job. So now you have top talent coming towards your business because you're in an, a specific industry and people want to work with that. People want to work with experts. So it's a very easy thing to do. So the next thing is, is you get a better return on investment. You know, especially when you're doing digital marketing, digital marketing is all about how effectively you can target your market and create massive messaging uh, and create massive auto response essentially. And the only way to do that is if you're talking to a specific market. And so if you were gonna say advertise on Facebook or something, you better believe if you're going out there just uh, you're trying to attract small business owners, you're probably gonna go fall flat on your face. So you have to have a market so you can really understand again, where is this market hanging out? What are their interests and what are the likes? What are their challenges that are overcoming? What does my business do to make their business better? Right. So, you know, one topic that I always get caught up on is, you know, almost every recruiter believes that they can recruit for any position. And I would venture to say that that's probably true on most cases. Most recruiters are really good at what they do and would have absolutely no problem recruiting um, almost any position. OK, but that's not the, that's not the issue here. The issue is trying to scale our business and get more business coming through our door. And that's where picking a specific industry and niche is so important. So here's five different ways we can do that. So first you can, you know, we've talked about it. You can pick out a specific industry. It could be manufacturing, it could be healthcare, it could be uh, medical devices, pharmaceuticals, banking, whatever it is. There's, there's, you know, tons of industries we can go after. And you can actually drill down even further from there. So you can go into tech and then you can go down into e-learning specifically in tech. And now you have, you know, this messaging within a specific industry. So that's one way you can choose a niche, right? And I'm sure you guys have heard of that. Second would be, well, I recruit this type of position. So instead of going after complete verticals like the healthcare, no, I just, I connect and, and recruit uh, nurse practitioners specifically. So, you know, that's another way that you can easily identify a niche. And then you can, again, easier to build your talent community, easier to communicate with these you know, hiring decision makers as to what you can bring to the table and make a difference for them. Geographical location. You know, this is a big one with staffing companies because a lot of staffing companies are more geographically focused, but this is another way that you can really show your expertise and specialty about attracting people. So it doesn't always have to be an industry. It doesn't always have to be positions. It, you know, something, just a way to target more thoroughly and more, just more targeted is, is, Anything is better than nothing. Company size, right? So they're, you know, you may have a really successful business model that really focuses and works with startups, um, or you may be more established and you may have more of, uh, you know, the recruitment model that you have goes after larger size companies. So you can target your, you know, your efforts based off of the size of the company that you want to go after. Okay, and that leads kind of right into the the last point of what type of recruiting do you do? Do you do executive search? Do you do some sort of, you know, large mass recruiting? Uh, do you do RPO type of recruiting services? You know, so you can specialize based off of the type of recruiting that you do. So again, what's important is that you're targeted in some way, shape or form. That's ultimately up to you. What you think your services, you know, what value you bring to the table to these prospective hiring managers and how clearly you can communicate that. So are you niched or are you not? I just want to know where everyone's at. You know, leave your comments below, uh, like and share this video if you enjoyed it. I just want to know what's going on, what your experience has been in the industry. You know, I've talked to hundreds, but I'd like to hear more of are you niched, are you not niched? Uh, has it been, have you felt it being as something that's been hampering your growth and your success or something that's been helping you? 
Anyways, this is Donnie Gupton, Marketing Coach. Check me out. Always feel free to schedule a strategy session, and I'll talk to you real soon.